Neither Santa Fe nor Washington, D.C. had recognized the breakaway territory, but the Arizonans had managed to set up a semi-functional, albeit understaffed government, and had successfully mobilized that governing body and the local population to win a small war. When states started seceding a few months later, in late 1860 and early 1861, the Federal Army began vacating frontier forts to recall the regular troops back east. This left the Arizonans even more exposed to Apache attacks, and caused a great deal of alienation against the federal government in those lands. For a better idea of the dangers faced by these pioneers, the 1860 New Mexico Census lists the causes of death for Arizona County. The top killer was illness, claiming over 70 lives, with the top offenders being fever, dysentery, and cholera. The second leading cause of death was Apache Raiders, taking 40 lives, while criminal homicide was a distant third with a mere 10 murders. Losing the meager protection of federal army patrols increased the physical danger for Arizonans, but losing the Butterfield Overland Stagecoach in March 1861 added a major economic and communicational burden for the settlers. Since the Anglo-American settlers were predominantly southern-born, and because Washington had left them to their fate during the secession crisis, the unrecognized territory naturally leaned towards the new southern confederacy. On March 16, 1861, still weeks before the Battle of Fort Sumter, leading citizens of the Arizona Territory, including Governor Owings and several other officials from the provisional government, held a convention in Mesilla where they voted to secede from the Union and petition the Confederate States for annexation. Doña Ana County Judge Thomas Bull remained strictly neutral during the secession crisis. He didn't recognize Arizona's separation from New Mexico or the United States, but he didn't confront the rebel government in Mesilla either. Beginning in April 1861, though, Bull decreed that all taxes and license fees collected for the first six months of that year be returned to the taxpayers. This way, the money wouldn't go to Santa Fe or to the rebel government in Mesilla. On April 9th, Judge Bull sent a letter to the citizens who happened to be the governor and lieutenant governor of Arizona demanding that they return 40 muskets that were county property. These, of course, were the weapons issued to the Arizona Rangers, that being the name of the territorial militia. 